All right, today I'm going to take a look at this Lytro camera. Now, the Lytro camera, at least the original one, is this oddly shaped square camera. I remember being really impressed by this technology when I first heard about it because it just seemed like, wow, how is that even going to operate? Basically, this thing captures light rays. So, in a normal standard camera you have a two-dimensional sensor and it reads color information well light information there's a filter over each sensor which essentially gives you color information but all it can do is capture the light intensity there's no real um, uh, information beyond that the focusing system in the camera is what determines what is in focus so the lens system will adjust you know like if I got my lens here the focus system moves the optics to to put one portion of the frame in focus and one out of focus so this camera captures the light rays and it basically it uses these micro lenses to capture the depth information so you have your normal color information and intensity but it also captures the angle in which the light is entering the camera so once you've taken the photo you have this raw file which in the software you can just click around and change the focus it is so crazy like you got to really wonder like how does this crap even work it's just so cool when you do it because because when you're used to like regular photography when you try this thing out it is really crazy to see it taking pictures or moving a picture in a way that you're not used to so um this thing came with a, a you know photo organizer and you can actually export the files as uh, 3d images as well but the uh, main thing about this was that you know you could post a picture and people could click around and explore the picture the problem with that is that there's a lot of planning involved in that if you want to get every part of the picture interesting so it doesn't really pan out in reality it's just kind of um a novelty of sorts i mean it would be interesting if this technology could be adapted to a real camera with a very high resolution so that if you missed the shot you could correct it that would be very useful but as it stands uh this the actual two-dimensional resolution of this is very low it's like one megapixel now Lytro did release a much bigger model with a bigger cam uh, lens bigger sensor everything uh, USB 3, all sorts of nice stuff uh, called the Ilium. Now, I don't have one of those. I would like to get my hands on one of those one day just to try out, but uh, it's, there's still a couple hundred bucks used, so uh, it might be a little while before I pick one of those up. Anyway, uh, this has a rubberized section and then a nice uh, anodized aluminum section on one side. Much like Apple products, this is designed in California and made in China. <laughs> so there's a, a USB port on this with a little barcode under there, probably the serial number, a little push button for the power, push button for the shutter, and then this kind of ridged strip right here is actually the zoom control. And then you've got the lens, uh, which is uh, the cap is held on with little magnets, which is actually a nice little touch. The only problem with this is this, uh, has no um, string or anything on it, so you could lose it. But uh, yeah, this actually has a zooming lens, so if we power this thing on, you can see that, and you can zoom in just by swiping this. And then there's like a basic touch menu system, which I can't really remember how it works exactly. Oh yeah, there you go, trash, got your settings, blah, 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 blah. So basic uh controls it's not a, a manual camera by any means i think i think you can do a couple basic manual controls like the uh, iso but that's about it so i wanted to see inside this thing and i mostly want to see the sensor although i imagine it's going to look like every other sensor but i don't really want to destroy this one even though these things are dirt cheap i think i paid 20 bucks for this well i paid like seven bucks for a smashed one so 
I think this one is uh, safe to open up. This thing actually does work. I did manage to um, charge it up and it, it does actually operate, but the glass is all shattered, so no one wants to deal with that. I think the way into this thing is going to be uh, by cutting this because it feels like this is like two sections. So I think if we cut, actually, you know, it kind of presses in right there. Mm, yeah, I think we got cut into this. Hmm. Well, this rubber crap is really on it. I just maybe just snap this, but it seems to be rather sturdily built. So I think this is going to need a... Uh, a little bit of time to pick through this because this is really really attached so I think it's just gonna take a bit of time until I find out exactly how they're uh, attaching these oh wait wait Got a little bit of foothold here I was kinda hoping this would just peel off and reveal a screw or something Trying to think of what the last step in manufacturing is. It looks like this is molded beside the LCD glass, so it's possible the rubber is in fact the last part. But I was thinking for a second maybe the glass is actually the last component added. It could it could be, and maybe the glass is what's covering up screws because that would make sense if they're um, running this way, but. Just gonna have to keep picking and hope I uh, find something. Oh wait, hang on, this is uh, flexing a bit. Maybe we can just break in right there, seeing as the glass is already broken. <laughs> oh, that'll be funny if that's the way you're supposed to do it. There are screws at the end of that. I didn't think that would pop right off. Let's see how long these screws are. Because if these run the entire length of the uh, case... <laughs> okay, I figured out how you're supposed to get into this thing after all that work but that's okay that's where all the fun is i mean what's the fun in opening up something the right way this is much more interesting feels like there's an adhesive or something holding it in A little bit of foam. I'm not sure what it's catching on. This is the entire lens assembly and the uh, sensor. You can see there's a little uh, piece of metal use, being used as a heat sink. Okay, it's on this. Side. Okay, it must be this foam stuff. I don't really see anything down there, so I'm not 
sure what it is. Now let me see, there is there is foam on each side, so it could be somewhat adhesive, but it doesn't look like it. It looks like it's just there to keep it from rattling around inside. Looks like it's huh, looks like it's like a heat sinking thing. Well, this does pop out. Maybe it goes the other way. Oh, I see the whole <laughs> the whole metal piece here is holding it in. There we go. Okay. Well, there's a nice little pretty strong piece of. Uh, oh yeah. A strong piece of aluminum right there and this piece looks like it's just for for heat sinking it's, or no it must be shielding because it's just it's just taped on to the side of the C, the um, the sensor no well, that could be thermal material so it might it might actually be for uh, thermal reasons there's a rubber surround Another thing keeping it from rattling around inside. Now my understanding is that although this thing does focus and you can even do touch focus, that sort of thing, it doesn't actually have a focusing system optically. It uses the, uh, the sensor and just changes the depth information. There's so many ribbon connections on this thing. So these must be, it must either have a stabilizer or it does actually have some kind of autofocus mechanism in the lens. I'm not sure yet. I guess we'll know in a minute. But it does seem like there's way too many connections on this and way too many devices. Like this piece of metal is the worm gear for the zooming. Yeah, see, there's the worm gear for the zoom control. All right, so let's just take that off so we can eliminate it. Small micromotor with a uh, little worm gear. Doesn't zoom particularly fast. Yeah, there you go. Ooh. And there's another device here. Four, four connections, five connections. Very unusual. Oh, there's another worm gear over here. So let's see what this does. Either the zooming mechanism is very complex or it does in fact have some kind of focusing. Does that come off? Oh, hang on. Let's get this sensor off. Oh, you can see the little detail. They're using these little springs behind the screws so they can properly align this when they're in uh, putting it together. They probably put it into some fancy jig and then just tension the screws to keep everything lined up perfectly. Oh, there's the sensor. Put that down for now. Small filter here, probably an infrared cut filter. Pretty standard on cameras. Yeah, it looks like it's just an IR cut filter. Pops right out. It's just held in with a little bit of epoxy. And <laughs> just the corners. That's kind of funny. They just have the epoxy in the little corners. And it's still uh, tacky. It must be uh, some kind of... Uh, weird silicone or something and okay so there's this little device here looks like a linear actuator okay so it looks like this thing when this energizes it just moves this little piece right here so this might be a shutter 
Hang on, this looks like it comes out. This is a little filter. Oh, I know what this is. This is a neutral density filter. Uh, this, yes, this camera does have a neutral density filter. I forgot that that's in the settings. So uh, what this does is it just uh, it just basically darkens the image. That's a pretty good indicator that it doesn't have proper aperture control because aperture would eff effectively do the same thing. And uh, but it would increase the depth of field, so they probably don't want a mechanical aperture because they want to keep the depth of field as narrow as possible to accentuate the uh, light field effect. So let me see if I can just pump that out. Yep. So if that goes over the lens, it gets darker, probably by about. I'd say that's probably a three-stop ND. Yep, just darker. And yeah, so all that all that actuator did was it moved a little pin in a, a, a semi-circle and just moved it. There was a little guide for it. Okay. Now, what is this worm gear doing? Oh. <laughs> so, I was like, what the hell just stabbed me? And then I realized that it pulled out part of the... Part of the motor. Weird. <laughs> it just pulled out like the ferrite core of the motor. Very similar worm gear, probably exactly the same. And this one, it's just moving this rear element. So that could be focusing. And what else we got? Yeah, what is this one? Okay, so that we can get rid of. And this piece too, what is this? Some kind of light sensor? Oh, it might be a, a Hall effect sensor. Or an optical. Yeah, okay, so that's just an optical. That's just a sensor. I don't know if that's optical or it looks like an optical one. But that's just that's just detecting whether or not um, it's in a certain position, the uh, lens assembly. And this since this has four connections as well. I'm going to go ahead and assume, assume that it is another positional sensor. Although this one doesn't seem to want to come out too easily. There we go. Yep, same thing. Just a positional sensor. Okay, so there's screw here. It's probably holding the majority of it together. Don't know what this one is. Oh, screws at the end, covered up by the little foam gasket they've got on the end of this thing. I guess just to keep crud out, provide a better seal at the end of the camera. For the first time, my A6500 overheated. They all seem to do that. Although the A6500 is better than the A6300, it still does overheat, unfortunately. Uh, I just told it to uh, ignore the temperature. Uh, thankfully, Sony added a temperature uh, mode where you can basically just say, I don't care how hot you get, just keep going. So that's the front element. It's just a rather, rather thick piece of glass. Pretty high magnification on that. And that is the zooming mechanism and there's some more screws in here <clears throat> now I did actually have it recording for quite some time since I was doing the uh, picking at all the plastic going the wrong way into the case uh, I did have it recording that for the little time lapse thing Usually I don't record sections that are too long. I tend to record smaller chunks, uh, which is bad for me because it's more annoying to edit. But um, I do tend to just break everything up. I also try to minimize 
Okay, so there we go. It looks like it's an electronic shutter. Um, I do try to minimize the amount of um, just wasted recording. So if I do a quick shot like this, I'll shut it off and go to the next one. Uh, that way it's not one continuous shot with a lot of waste of time because oh, I don't like to waste space on computers, I guess. I don't know. It just seems like a waste because you're... Uh, you're storing all that data and when you load it into it's one giant video file so when you load it into your editor it's just you're just chopping it out and never using it and it's just staying on the drive uh, so there's a little lens element there and then these guide rails are what move the uh, section that's being controlled uh, pushed by the worm gear this looks like this is the back one this might be either part of the focusing which again I don't think it is actually mechanical focus I think it's just using two motors to uh, actuate the, uh, the zoom mechanism and this is a little that's unusual it's got like a little sheet over it looks like it's probably just trying to block out stray light I wonder if that was an afterthought Peels off. Hmm. This is metal right here. Is that a, not a magnet. That's weird. I wonder what this is for. Looks like it's epoxied in as well. Oh, this is hard epoxy. I don't think I'll be able to get that out. Hmm. Not really sure what that's for. It might be some kind of dampening. There's no metal on this side, so I'm not really sure what the purpose of that is. Unless it has something to do with the shutter. Hmm. I don't know. So this looks like it's just a very thin mechanical shutter. Pretty standard on uh yeah. That's actually pretty cool how it opens. <laughs> on to the brains of the operation. So uh this is the capacitive touch sensor for the zoom. And then I was, I was surprised to find that this is a mechanical shutter button and power button. Oh, I can turn it on still. Go ahead and Wow, it doesn't, it doesn't even throw up an error or anything. But I guess I can uh, understand if they weren't counting on you disconnecting everything from it. So we've got a bunch of screws here. These look like they hold that rubberized part that I couldn't get off. one hidden away break it off anyway there we go take that out just because it's got some jagged plastic on it and knowing my luck I'm gonna stab myself with it so there's a little speaker here with a little rubber cover on it let me disconnect this battery this oh um, I was wondering what this piece was that's got to be the antenna this thing does have um, Wi-Fi. I think it has Bluetooth as well. <clears throat> yeah. That's just a small Wi-Fi antenna. Wire runs down the side. Will you turn off? Oh, <laughs> I think it's at the point where it won't turn off. I think it completely crashed. Uh, let me see if this is just the, the battery connector. Yep. Okay. <laughs> and these screws should take out the main board. I'm not sure how much uh, processing is in this. I imagine it's very little. I mean, I know the 
raw files are processed all on the um, on your computer. So it's not like it's going to be doing any depth stuff on this. Although, let me check the other one. Hang on. Does this thing allow for depth stuff on playback? Looks like it does. Hang on, let me see if I can find something a little more drastic. Okay, so it looks like, I think they are doing some depth, basic depth stuff, like low res, obviously. This screen is very low resolution. So, they probably do have at least a half decent ARM processor in here. I mean, I assume it's an ARM processor, since most things are. Okay. So, the buzzer is glued and soldered. Peel that off. Don't need that. And there is no CPU on that, so there must be another board. Must be, oh, okay, I can see, I can see more stuff back there. So, let's if this just takes off the front that's just a uh, connection board with the USB it's not a bad design because you probably need a high layer count board for the CPU and this just has like USB and stuff on it so you can get away with like a two layer board okay so this is the cage with the battery in it. It's a rather large battery. I can't really remember what the battery life is on this thing. I um I certainly didn't run into a dead battery. Uh, Twenty one hundred milliamp hour, seven point seven watt hour. Not bad. It's an interesting form factor. It's got must be pretty high current if they're running um, using two conductors for the positive and negative and then you got you know like the temperature sensor or whatever running from that so oh good I was gonna say these screws look like they're just too small for this uh, what is this Phillips number zero I want to get this screen off because I'm Holding broken glass, and I'm not too comfortable with that. Sure, they must. This must go in the other way, because these pieces don't seem to move for this backboard, which also has the capacitive touch thing so that's probably like a capacitive touch sensor chip and oh all right let's see what happens see if we can just peel all this away would like to look at the whole thing without stabbing myself with broken glass, ideally. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I think if I just break these pieces, I've got adhesive running along the edge. That's what's keeping most of the glass intact, but not all of it. So these look like they're screwed in. So I'm just like ripping out the, there. So you take out part of the PCB and it just pops the screw out. Okay, so. That's the good stuff right there. 
And this is just an LCD with a touch sensor. That's probably the touch sensor chip right there. It's rather compact. It's an interesting display because it's square. What this is for? Hmm. It's weird that there's a cutout there. Must be for a different model or something. But that might actually be a kind of cheap way to get the um, get square LCDs. Saint plus. Giant Plus. Giant Plus. Okay. So these are very cheap cameras on eBay, so might be a an interesting way to get uh, square LCDs if, if you don't want to go the iPod Nano route like uh, Mike Harrison. USB board mostly has just passives. They've got a couple of jumpers here, probably optional filters, and a oh, little piece of silicon here, and uh, probably a voltage regulator. A couple MOSFETs. What's that? Is that just a blob of it? Looks like it's a little blob of adhesive behind the uh, switch. Oh, that's probably to hold it down for soldering or something. And. Yeah, that's just a little piece of foam. Yeah, so that's just the interface board. On the back. Don't know what that is. Another jumper link. It's probably some it's probably something to do with USB. And as for this board. Okay, I think I know what this is. This is going to be the Wi-Fi system. You can see the little connector for the Wi-Fi antenna. And that looks like it's on a separate PCB, maybe? Yep, there's a little Wi-Fi module. Yeah, it's a separate PCB. And probably power supply stuff for the Wi-Fi module. And not much else. More DC to DC converters. These are the high density connectors that connect to the main board here. So you got the main board with this flex cable. And this runs to the, um, the sensor board. So you got these two shielded flex cables and this will be the 8 or 16 gigs of memory there's uh, two different versions one has 8 gigs one is 16 so this seems to be just a uh, Zoran uh, basically camera on a chip it's basically all the circuitry you need to do the uh, processing the USB interface flash interface sensor interface all that stuff so I'm sure they've uh, loaded this thing up with rather custom firmware and then uh, this looks like this looks like just some buffer memory and probably drivers for the sensor and power supply stuff other than that it's basically just uh, like a webcam processor or a dash cam processor there's nothing too unique about it has a little rubber shroud. Oh, another screw. Two more screws, in fact. Okay, so they've got a little, a little hump there with some thermal compound to make contact. A cutout right for the thermal compound for the sensor. And oh yeah, these must be the uh, the drivers for the sensor. I, as far as I know, it's a CCD based uh, sensor. Um, it might be CMOS, but I, I thought I read something that said it was a CCD. And there you go, there's a little sensor. It's got a piece of glass over it. Looks like a pretty, pretty standard sensor. Although it has its like patented micro lenses and, oh, is that a pattern? There might be a pattern on that. Might have something to do with it. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, much more magnification ability until I buy a microscope. So I'm going to hang on to this. That's kind of an interesting design. 
I mean, yeah, it's basically just a regular camera and a funky form factor with a uh, fancy sensor, but it was it was pretty interesting. I liked how it was constructed, even though uh, I kind of opened it the wrong way. 